Hey everyone, today we're going to be seeing if you can swim just as fast in syrup as you can in water. I recently read a research article that said you can swim just as fast in syrup as you can in water. Because even though the syrup is more viscous, you can push off of it more. And so even though it's slowing you down, you can push yourself through it easier. And so it ends up equaling about the same speed as you can swim just in water, even though it's less viscous and you can get through it easier, but you can't push off it as easy. So today I wanted to test that out. So first let's start off with our small scale test here. So to start off, I'm gonna be testing speeds with my turtle here with water and then with syrup and seeing how they compare. Okay, here's two quarts. Okay, here we go for the head to head race. Three, two, one. Syrup wins, even with hitting the side. <laughs> Let's try that again. Three, two, one. It's way faster in the syrup. I've taped a straw to each of their heads, and then I have a string going down the center, and so this will at least keep them from going too far off course, so they can at least finish the track a little bit. Three, two, one. <laughs> Same time. <laughs> Okay, three, two, one. Again, the same. So it really is the same to swim in syrup versus water. So somehow the turtle that was swimming in syrup was able to swim the same speed as the turtle that was swimming in water. But what's really weird about this is if I test the viscosity of the two liquids, you obviously get a higher viscosity for the syrup. One way to test the viscosity of something is to drop a sphere in a cylinder of the liquid. Now watch what happens when I drop a sphere in a cylinder of water compared to the syrup. So here's how long it takes to drop in water. Three, two, one. And here's how long it takes to drop in syrup. Three, two, one. So the syrup is about twice as long as the water. So somehow just dropping a sphere in syrup takes longer, it's harder to get through and get to the bottom than in water. So why is swimming any different? Why doesn't it take twice as long for the turtle to swim through syrup compared to water? Well, the reason for this discrepancy is because for human swimming, and it looks like for toy turtles as well, the dominant force that's keeping you back, the main resistance is called form drag. Now, in fluid mechanics, form drag means that for a shape like this book and this sphere, even though they have the same cross-sectional area, the force on it wouldn't be the same if you're trying to drag it through a fluid. For example, if you hold this book in front of a fan, you would feel a greater force than if you held this ball in front of a fan. It's because this book isn't very aerodynamic, so it creates a separation layer larger than the ball. So it creates a lot more friction behind it and turbulence, and that slows it down. The drag is more on this book. For this ball, it lowers the separation area, so there's less drag behind it. It's more aerodynamic. So in things that aren't very aerodynamic, it means that the dominating factor, the main resistance stopping them from moving forward through a fluid is their form, the shape of them. Now the basis for this experiment comes from a research paper from the University of Minnesota where researchers were arguing whether or not a human could swim faster if the liquid were more viscous than they were swimming in. Some people who were very well renowned in fluid mechanics argued that, well, if the fluid were thicker, then it's harder to get through, so of course they're gonna slow down. But that some people were saying, well, if it's thicker, you can push off it harder, so you should be able to go faster through it. So what these researchers did is actually do an experiment to prove it. What they did is they filled a swimming pool with guar gum to make it so it was twice as viscous as regular water. And then they compared the times of professional swimmers compared to lay swimmers, and water and then the guar gum to see if their times changed between the two. 
And what's really interesting is they found that the times didn't change at all. They had hardly any variation between the two. What they found was that in this range of viscosity, it doesn't matter that the syrup's thicker because it gives you more things, more liquid to push off of, a harder, more viscous liquid to push off of. So it cancels out the added drag you get from being in the syrup. But if you leave this viscosity range of one to two times the viscosity of water, then you're not gonna see the same effect. For example, when I first did this experiment, I just did it with really thick syrup. And in that case, here's what happened. Okay, let's see. Three, two, one. <laughs> uh, not quite as fast, I would say. <laughs> okay, that was like 25 seconds, so not even close to what it is in water. So if the viscosity is too much, the skin drag does overpower the form drag, and so you can't move as fast at all. The turtle could barely get through that syrup. So when I got into the range of four times the viscosity of water, then it was much too viscous for the turtle to swim in it. I'm not sure how a human would do in that, but the turtle wasn't able to go at all. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you liked it, I hope you learned something. If you did, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, and also don't forget to hit the bell so that you can be notified when I release my latest video. And you can also check out theactionlab.com to see the two Action Lab experiment boxes that I put out. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.